Well, let's call up my first guest. He's the front man of Queen, um, no small feat, and a former finalist on American Idol. You can see him streaming across the globe on January 29th and Adam Lambert live at the Roxy. Give it up for Adam Lambert, everybody. What's up, you handsome devil? Look how good you look. I mean, I have to ask you? you this. Are you ever going to come out with a makeup line? Because you do your makeup so well. Well, thanks. I, you know, I'd love to. I think that'd be really fun. Um, I've been playing with makeup since I was a little kid. I just, like, I remember because I was in theater. So, like, it was part of, you know, getting ready for a show. And yeah. I, I just love getting to sit in front of the mirror and transform my face and um, cover up all my freckles at the time because I was ashamed of them. Um, uh. I wish I had them today. But I love makeup. I think it's so much fun. I wanted, I wanted freckles so badly because they said when I was a kid, I used to hear people say freckles were angel kisses. And I was like, I've never <laughs> been kissed by an angel. I don't know, one freckle. <laughs> it's like, I used to be so down about it. But every time I run into you, you always look so handsome. And, I, and I, I'm always like, is that what I'm supposed Aww. to be doing? Um, like, am I supposed to be able to do that? <laughs> like, anyway, you look <laughs> amazing. But did you see Luvalin's song? Did you see that? Yes, yes. I want, like, I, now I need to see more because I didn't understand what it was at first. I just watched the song. And I'm like, what's he saying? And then I saw on the top of the screen, like the, the, oh. the screenshot of the, the, the feud. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Um, have, you, have you ever been in a virtual feud like that? I mean, probably. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I learned a few years back that like what, could be considered like a healthy debate for some is not for others. And, uh, you know, when you're doing it on Twitter, you're really leaving yourself open to yeah. uh, all those different versions of how they feel about a debate. So yeah. I, I, I now I try to keep it for like a private audience. <laughs> it is a hard thing because I think sarcasm gets lost. Like, you know, a lot of things can get lost when you're, you know, being funny or whatever. And and, and everybody always has their, you know, their different world and how they're receiving it. And so it can, it's so hard. So what's it like, um, you know, just fronting Queen? You've been doing it for how long? Like over a decade? It's been like eight or nine years now. Yeah, we met on the finale of Idol, actually. Oh my God, is that true? I didn't know that that's how that happened. That has yeah, they, they, they came and performed and it was like, something felt like it clicked, but I couldn't tell you what, because you know how the finale is. It's like very very confusing and very yeah. chaotic. Um, but then not too long afterwards, they got in touch with my team and that's where it started. And wow. I, I'm like, I, I, every time I get on stage with them, I'm like, oh my God, this job is the coolest job in the world. <laughs> and this audience, like, all the audiences we see around the world are so fantastic. They know the words to every song. They're mm -hmm. dancing. There's so much nostalgia floating through the audience. So yeah. I am very excited for things to get back to normal and for us to be able to go on tour again. I know, I keep making that joke that not one artist knew that they were on their farewell tour, like the last tour they did. <laughs> it's like, we're not <laughs> able to like actually tour. We didn't know it, but we did it. I mean, I gotta say this too, not only makeup, man, you always look so fly. So like, is it hard for you? Cause now we're like only on Zoom and everybody can only see like this much of you. Is it hard? because you want to get yeah it's up. weird i mean like on one hand it's sort of a relief because the quarantine 15 is real uh <laughs> and uh yeah. you know chest up i'm good with I don't that know, um, i don't know what you're referring <laughs> to the problem areas um let's be honest let's destigmatize it um but i you know i, I it's you know i'm wearing like sweatpants with elastic waistbands more than i ever have in my entire life Oh, see, now when people started saying, oh, I'm looking so relaxed all the time, I was like, so like, welcome to my life, like that it's been, <laughs> like, I was like, there's no, no new clothes are worn. It's the same old clothes I'm wearing. And I was like, well, um, but you were on Idol 12 years ago and I know we were on different seasons and I know that they were different things too, like, you know, different times, but I, I, don't, I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed like the, the camaraderie within the contestants, like all the artists on there. Did you enjoy it? I did. I had fun. Me too. I had a great time. I mean, I was in a place in my life where I had just sort of like, I had this sort of shift in the way I saw the world and that I realized very graphically that I had been scared of so much. Like fear was holding me back in a lot of areas in my life, including my professional life. And mm -hmm. that year before I auditioned, I just kind of had this, you know, this breakthrough where I was like, I'm not scared anymore. 
you know, I don't have anything to lose, so I might as well throw myself at things. And Idol was one of the things that came up. I saw the audition and I was like, you know, why not? Keep saying yes to as much as you can and something will happen. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know if you agree, but I I was, I know nobody believes me when I say this, but I was actually pretty shy when I was little. And then once I started getting on stage and singing and kind of finding that I felt like I was good at something, it, it empowered me and gave me like such a different level yeah. of confidence. So that's what, do you feel like that? Do you feel like in life, like art has kind of yeah. helped you become who you are and more meant to be? Absolutely. Even if it's many things, once you kind of find what you love, it gives you a sense of self, you know? Um, and I, you know, and I love, you know, like, like shoes. I love shoes for, for, you know, for example, wait. shoes really keep me on track. Wait, I love shoes too. Wait, this is not a, this is a real thing. I love shoes, but I'm talking like Nikes. Like I have like so many Nikes in my closet. Like I, or what kind of shoes are you referring to? Well, I like really like the most extreme as I can possibly find, but also, I mean, you know, we are so I'm opposite. I'm going to be 40 <laughs> in a year and a half and Sneakers are becoming a necessity, but I found these the other day online and ordered them and I wanted to show them to you. <gasps> oh my God, no, but see, this is what's fabulous about what you're holding. Okay, see, I'm down with what you're holding and this is why. See, it looks like a huge heel, but it's the platform. Your foot's not actually doing this the entire time, Jimmy Choo. They're, I mean, they're, they hurt. <laughs> they do? Nah, then I won't wear them. Yeah, I'm, they hurt. I, no, I'm getting too old for this thing, no. I'm just, I look at my cellist and I'm like, no. <laughs> but they look fabulous. <laughs> I think they're like a moment for like a, like a, like one performance for something where it's one song. Yeah. Maybe seated on a stool. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I love it. I love it. Well, how do you feel? Because um, I feel like you're a, a bit of a pioneer in the sense of like being on Idol, especially um, and being gay. That was kind of a, a big thing, like being on the show and and having Middle America jump on board and vote. You know, and and I know that had to been hard. I have friends in the in the same position. So, how do you think things have changed for gay artists since 2009? Man, it's a, it's a big change. I mean, I remember coming off of Idol and you know, going into the mainstream music industry label system and them just, even if they were excited themselves, there was a lot of like question marks. There was a lot of fear like, is this gonna sell? Is this gonna work? And as you know, like that's the name of the game for the, the, the commercial music business. It's a business. Yeah. So, you know, I, it, was, it was a bit of a struggle to kind of hold my ground and keep focused on my part of the, the, the deal, which is being the artist, being the musician. Um, being the guy that wears those weird shoes. Um, yeah. But I, you know, it was a lot of ups and downs, but I'm, I'm really thankful for my experience. And I think that, I think that the, the world has changed. I think we're in a place now within the music industry, within the entertainment industry and in the world where yes, there's still, you know, discrimination, there's still problems, there's still work to be done, but there has been so much progress made. I, I agree. I think it's interesting, and one of the main reasons why I signed up to do The Voice was because I'm turned around and I can't see what they look like. I don't know anything about them. Like, there are no preconceived notions. And I and I love, like, as a kid, I was so poor. I didn't have MTV. I didn't have any... Like, literally, the only time I saw artists were maybe on award shows if, like, the one television in our house was allowed to be on the awards that night. And so, <laughs> and so like, I never saw anyone. So I fell in love with music like how they sounded. It had nothing to do, I had no idea if anybody was gay, I had no idea if they were whatever. Like I, I just fell in love with the music and I think that that is so important because that's the art, it's the music and that's, and it moves us and I don't care what package it comes in as long as I'm lucky enough to get to hear it, you know, from whatever Aww. vessel it comes out of. But is it true that you're writing your own musical? Cause I find that fascinating. Yeah, I am, I've been working on it this year. I mean, you know, after, after, I put out an album out in March called Velvet, and literally a week and a half later, everything got shut down. So I was like, oh, you know, okay, let's yeah. mourn the loss of that. Obviously, there's more <laughs> important things going on in the world. A pop album. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had, I, it kind of had gotten into the works last year, but when I had all this downtime, I was like, okay, now's the time to really like buckle down and work on this thing. And I'm so excited about it. Um, but you're doing <laughs> two live virtual shows on your birthday this Friday. So happy birthday, first of all, that's exciting. Thank you. Um, and also, Thank you. Uh, why two? I'm just curious, why are you doing two live shows? Doing two because one's at noon and one's at night, that way people overseas can watch it. I have, I'm very lucky to have oh. fans in Europe, in yeah. the UK. 
So, you know, making it a global approach. I was wondering, I was like, oh my God, you're really Broadwaying it up with the matinee and the, the night. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> I was like, it's show day. I know, and I, and I haven't been singing much lately. So I'm like, whew, this is gonna be a, a long day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, good luck and Godspeed on that note. Um, be sure Thank to you. check out Adam's live stream show on January 29th from the Roxy Theater in Los Angeles.